Hi friends, this is Pastor Lucas Pina from Coco Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you're here with us to worship with us, even though it's through the internet. Uh, we're still doing the, the recording service, but we pray and hope that we will be able to reopen our church soon. So please uh, uh, be alert. Uh, we're going to receive a uh, one of these days, you're going to receive a, a, a information from our church on Facebook, a letter from the session. The goal is, this is, we know that this is temporary, right? You know that. It's, we're not going to do this forever. 
we're, even though we're going to keep the stream live uh, as long as we can, and we're, we're working on that, so even though when we open the church, some people still not be, will not be able to come to service for a while, so we will keep doing this, but at the same time, we're going to uh, have a, a, a service there in our sanctuary. So we miss that. I know that we miss. You miss that. And keep us in our prayers. Everything that we're doing here, we, we, we hope will be a blessing to you. We're great that you're here with us. Uh, check our website, cocopress.org. We, we have a group and page on Facebook. So check us out. Uh, uh, we have a page, I have a page uh, on YouTube called Lucas Pina. Lucas Pina, go to YouTube called Lucas Pina. Be sure to, to, to recognize my face there because there are other Lucas Pina, Lucas Pina out there. So, and we have devotions, we have the choir singing, we have old sermons there. So a lot of resources there. So check and, and, and take a look and see. And, uh, and so you can nurture your faith. But let us, let us worship the Lord. At this time, I'd like to have a moment for us to pray. It has been tough, and for some of, some of you, 
it has been tougher, hard. Uh, we, we just posted uh, our kids that are graduating. We celebrate with them, but they <laughs> it's hard for them because they cannot celebrate, right? No graduation. Well, they're trying to do something to substitute, but it's not the same thing. At least we are going to have a story to tell and say, well, I survived COVID-19. I was there that time. We didn't have graduation. And you're, have, you're going to have stories to tell. But I know that right now it's hard for, for the girls and, and boys that are graduating. We celebrate with you. We bless you. And hanging in there. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, but congratulations. And, uh, and other people are facing other health problems that COVID-19 is it's kind of on the way because some people are afraid to go to the hospital and they stay home and uh, it's it's tough it's tough business people losing their jobs and now we have this uh all this uh it's a is a pandemic with a pandemonium it's it's crazy what's going on there so uh, we pray that you're going to be safe. We pray that the Lord is going to guard you and protect you. And if you have a prayer request, please uh, send us email, call the, the, the church phone number. Uh, uh, at the end of this video, you're going to have some information on the email, uh, a website, and, and church phone number. Leave a message. Uh, we're not there in the office uh, uh, every day of the week, and so but we check the message. So please leave a message, and we we will call you back, or we will pray for you, or send a prayer request to the congregation. Okay. So let us let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence here with us. Even though we are separated, we can get together to worship you and praise you and pray to you, O Lord. We, we bring before you uh, our gratitude to the graduate uh, uh, class. Uh, we, we pray for them, O oh Lord. We pray for the doors to open for them. We pray for those that are home, cannot leave. We pray for those that are facing illness other than COVID-19. We pray for their bodies and their minds. We pray for those that are traveling. We pray for those that have business, for those that lost their job. And we ask you, O oh Lord, to have mercy. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Bless us, O oh Lord. Bless us as a church. We pray for our members. We pray for our leaders. Give us wisdom. Help us, help us to make uh, the right decisions, O oh Lord. Give us patience during this time so we can endure all the problems that we're facing right now, O oh Lord. Help us to trust in you. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our Bible lesson for this morning is in the book of Isaiah, book of Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, chapter 6, a very well-known uh, text, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 7. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their face, with two they covered their feet, and with two they, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with the smoke. Woe to me, I cry, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal on his, in his hand, which he had taken with thongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard a voice, the voice of the Lord, saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Here am I. Send me. And this is the word of the Lord. For you this morning. Let us pray. Father, we pray that your Spirit will help me to communicate your word. We pray that your Spirit will help it, will help all the tools that we're using to transmit this service and this message. And we pray that you will touch everyone who's listening, so they will be blessed by this message. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are continuing our, uh, our challenge. It's a challenge for me to, to to work on all those hymns and try to find who wrote, what circumstance, who they, and, and where they were, at what time, and all that kind of, to learn a little bit so I can share with you. And today we're going we're gonna to talk about this beautiful hymn that we, 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 just, uh, we just heard, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Today we celebrate the Trinity Sunday. So it's, uh, this hymn is part of it. And we are, we're celebrating with you. And this hymn is a beautiful hymn. He is, it's composed by Reginald Heber. And he was always trying to improve the music at the Anglican Church. And he served in Hodnet, England. And, and it, uh, it's interesting because he, is, is, he did something that was different. And, and he was trying to... Uh, to improve the music and all the way, the style and everything. And then and, and he faced some uh, uh, opposition there, though the, his superiors frowned on the use of anything but metrical psalms. Heber introduced hymns by Newton and Cowper, and even wrote the new hymns of his own. So he was just trying to make things a little bit different and, and create new things. And many of our hymnals still carry three or four of Eber's hymns, including this one that we just sang, Holy, 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 which the poet Alfred Lord Tennyson called the world, world's greatest hymn. So the poet Lord Tennyson called the world's greatest hymn. So it's it's a beautiful hymn, right? It's a beautiful. You, you start singing, it's kind of whoa! It's kind of holy, holy, holy. Lord God, it's it's great. It's kind of wow! It's so magnificent. After serving sixteen years as a parish priest in England, Heber accepted the call to become the bishop 
of Kolkata in India. And he served in Calcutta for only three years before he died at the age of 43. Can you believe that? 43. Whether in England, as he surveyed the prevalence of vice, or in Ninja, where he was surrounded by the worship of false gods, Heber was impressed with the holiness of God. Only thou art holy, he wrote. The tune to which this hymn is usually sang, sung is called Nikea, the name after the church council that met in 325 AD, which formulated the Nicene Creed and affirmed the doctrine of the Trinity. So it's, it's, it's the Trinity is present all over the place. And, uh, and this text that we read from Isaiah, we have that there. And this is the hymn and the, and, the, and the words, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea, cherubim and seraphim, falling down before thee, which work and art and evermore shalt be. Holy, 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 thou the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinful flesh the glory, thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in, in power, in love, in purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth, in sky, and sea. Holy, 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 merciful, and mighty. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Yet it's, it's great. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful hymn. And, and this text that we read from Isaiah, we have that presence. We have, it's, it's interesting because it's a, it's a very well-known text. And Judah that time, this, the, the kingdom of the south is passing for a terrible, they were going through a tough, tough time, a terrible time. The king Uzziah is dead, which signaled the end of a long period of relative peace and prosperity. And Isaiah received favor and protection from the king, so he was uh, well welcome in the, in the palace. Now, a new king is coming to the throne. Doubts and uncertainties are boiling up, not only in the country, but in Isaiah's heart. And this is why he decides to go to the temple. And there he has a vision and he sees the real, the real king. And we learn, we learn beautiful lessons from this hymn and from this text from Isaiah and his experience. The first lesson that we learn and we need during this time that we're going through, during this situation that we find ourselves, the country, the cities, the business, families, and personal, we need to understand and we need to see that God, He is seated on the throne. This is what we learn from the, from the hymn and this is why we learn from Isaiah. God is city seated on the throne. That means that he and he only, let me say it again, he and he only governs the universe. Not only our small life and family, but the whole universe. There is no other more powerful than him. I saw the Lord, this is Isaiah saying, I saw the Lord seated on the throne, high and exalted, on the train of his robe, filled the temple. I saw the Lord seated on the throne. And the hymn we have, holy, 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 all the saints I adore, adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea, cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, which were, art, and evermore shall be. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the 
essence of adoration is the recognition that God is powerful, almighty, seated on a throne, ungoverned, controls every, everything. There is nothing in your life, in my life, that uh, escapes the control of God. And it's very important for us to understand that. It's very important for us to believe in that. Not only that, we learn something else here in this hymn and this text when this experience from Isaiah is that God is holy. That means separated, different, unique. This is what the, the holy means. He's, he's a separate, he's, he's separate from us, he's different from us, and he's unique. That is none like him. This is what the, the seraph saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his Lord. There is none like him. There is none like him. There is no other God, no other person more powerful than God. And he is different. And this is what the, the hymn says, holy, holy, holy. Though the darkness hide thee, Though the eye of simple flesh thy glory may not see, only thou art holy, there is none beside thee. Perfect in power, in love, and purity. Yes, this is this God. This is our God. He is holy. He is perfect. He is different. He is unique. When we are able to complete contemplate God's holiness, we realize our own sinfulness. When we look at God and His Spirit, we are forced to look at ourselves and our weakness and sin. And this is what Isaiah did, right? This is, why, uh, this is what Isaiah did. The, 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 the hymn says, the, uh, Though the eye of simple flesh thy glory may not see. Yes, we... When you have that vision of God in His purity, in His holiness, in His uniqueness and power, we look at ourselves and say, oh my good, we are in trouble. I am in trouble. Right? Yes, that is the, that is the common sense. Right? You have to look at yourself. When you look at God and His power and His Majestic, majesty and majestic presence, we, we look at us and say, oh my good, I'm in trouble here. And this is what Isaiah said, I'm in trouble here. Because God is holy and I am not. God is good and I am not. God is perfect and I am not. God is strong and almighty and I am not. And this is what we need to understand. He is holy. He is different. He is separated from us. And He is unique. And there is none like Him. That is an important lesson for us to understand. But there is another lesson that we need to understand in this story here. Because the story doesn't stop there. With this big separation between God and us. The story doesn't stop there. Between this uh, big separation of a holy, perfect, pure God and sinful, weak, broken people, the story does not stop there. His God, this God, that is perfect, that is unique, that is different, that is pure, that is powerful, that is almighty, this God is a forgiven God. He is a forgiving God. He's not only holy, but he's forgiving. Isaiah confessed his sin when he looked at God and said, I am ruined. He confessed. He understood that he was in trouble. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. I am in trouble. I am ruined. And God provided forgiveness for Isaiah. Sarah took a 
what the what this says the text. Let me read the text for you. The one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, Look what that, that is a beautiful lesson for us. See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sins are atoned. The hymn says, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty. Merciful and mighty. And, and this forgiveness that we receive because of the mercy of God will enable us to do something with our lives. You're going to be able to do something with your life. I'm going to be able to do something with my own life. It's that we're going to be able to hear God and respond to Him. Verse 8 says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Here I am, send me. It's interesting because this, this text of sometimes in Isaiah, this text of Isaiah 6, is used for the Trinity with the holy, holy, holy. But then we have this here. It's very interesting. All the way there, I don't, I don't know if you pay attention, but it, it, God used the, the plural here. And who will go for us? It's like the Trinity is involved in this whole process here. And Isaiah responds, here I am, send me. Yeah, this powerful God that is different, that is unique, powerful, great. He is merciful, willing to forgive us, willing to forgive me, willing to forgive you. But also, he is willing to give us the chance, the opportunity to be used in His kingdom. And we just need to respond. Say, yes, I, I can do something. Today I hope you can hear His voice. I hope you can understand His, His uniqueness, His power. I hope you can look at you and see your limitations and weaknesses and sins. And, and I hope you receive the forgiveness that He offers to you. And I hope you are able to respond His call. His call to work, to serve, to help. Who is going to sin? Who is going to go for us? Who shall I send? And I hope you can join Isaiah and say, Here I am. Send me. Send me. My friend, my sister, and my brother, God is holy, powerful, sovereign. And He's sitting on the throne. We need to understand that. The throne of the universe. And He governs everything. He's a forgiven God who wants to have fellowship with us with me and with you. And not only that, he also wants to use each one of us in his kingdom. And I hope and pray that you will hear his voice and you will respond. Here I am. Send me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us. We thank you for this word. We thank you for this hymn. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit around us and in us. And we pray, O oh Lord, that we will understand who we are, who you are. And we will be able to listen to your call and to answer to your call. Bless us, O oh Lord, and bless everyone who is listening now. 
We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, may God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and bless you and help you and walk with you and enable you to respond to his call today and every day of your life. Amen. Thank you.